Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority, 630. Eight oh seven. Good Monday morning to you. This is the Morning Majority. Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Ham, and Brian Wilson. The whole crew back in town. Okay, I was the one who was missing, yeah. but I'm back in town. <laughs> we never left. It's all about Neiman. You know, before I left, there was talk about a debt deal. There was a debt problem. I come back. There's still talk about a debt deal, and there's still a it's, debt. Problem. It's a little bit like watching a soap opera. Like every day, if you're watching, you think something's happening, right. but, but nothing, really nothing's but, yeah. actually. Weeks happening. pass, and nothing really has changed. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's really true. Steve Moore joins us now, senior economics writer for the Wall Street Journal editorial page, member of the Journal's editorial board. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, guys. So what do you what do you think? I mean, you've got your ear to the ground on these kinds of deals. Uh, you know, Boehner walked out apparently last second and says, you know what, um, I'm not going to go with any kind of deal that raises taxes. Um, in your opinion, wh- where does this thing end? Can it can they even come up with a deal? Well, first of all, I think uh, John Boehner did the right thing this weekend. I, I was very concerned that uh, that John Boehner would sign on with a big tax increase, just like George Bush did in 1990, which destroyed the Republican Party. Look, the Republican Party is a is an anti tax party, as my old friend Bob Novak used to say. The only reason God put Republicans on this earth is to cut taxes, not to raise them. So, right. I think that would have been a huge mistake. And I think um, this is the right. The emphasis has got to be on two things a long-term uh, spending reduction and, and spending caps that, that uh, are enforceable that get this spending problem uh, down. I mean, we're borrowing a trillion and a half dollars a year. Obama ran up the budget uh, by you know, ungodly amounts in his first two years in office. And what his, his agenda was to then raise taxes and have Republicans pay for it all. Well, let me ask you this on the tax part. We hear a lot from Republicans saying, hey, now is not the time to raise taxes. We need uh, recovery. You don't want to do that. It'll suck out all the oxygen out of any kind of recovery if we're even having that right now. Is there ever a good time for raising taxes? <laughs> well, I was going to say, uh, you're certainly right that uh, when you've got 9.2% unemployment, when you're not creating any jobs, when you've got the real unemployment rate, in my opinion, is about 16% when you include people who can't find full-time jobs and people just, you know, given up on finding a job. So this is this is a mini depression we're living in. It's the Obama depression, as Newt Gingrich called it, mm-hmm. uh, today in his piece, and I agree with him. I think that this is a very serious time where we, we cannot possibly raise taxes or you will put the economy into a depression. So we've got to concentrate on getting spending down, and that's something Obama, uh, you know, is it seems like he's allergic to that whole idea. Steve, we had uh, Stuart Varney on just a bit ago, and he was he was talking about this unemployment number, which came out on Friday, unemployment up to 9.2%, yeah. not a great number, and he said it may actually have driven the two sides apart, because each of them walk away with a different interpretation of what should now happen as a result of that that sort of weak job number. What's your take on all that? I, I think Stuart is exactly right. Look, the Democrats tr- really believe that their $800 billion stimulus plan was going to work. They, <laughs> they drank the Keynesian Kool-Aid that the way you get the economy to grow is by the, having the government spend money. Now, you and I and, and Mary Catherine and all of us know that's not true. I mean, as Milton Friedman taught us, there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. If the government spends a dollar, the dollar has to come out of the productive private sector. There's no tooth theory here. And so that the Democrats have concluded is they want another stimulus plan, Brian. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they want it, another $800 billion how, plan, how, which is insane. How many know, times so. does it have to fail? I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That's the, that's, uh, that's the interesting thing. It's, it's almost like this kind of neuroses that no matter how many times it fails, they still come up with the, uh, with the same prescription. And it's interesting. I just wrote an editorial comparing this, quote, recovery, and I, I put that in quotes now because I'm not sure we're in a recovery mm-hmm. now, with the Reagan recovery, at this uh, juncture of the Reagan expansion, the economy was growing at 8%, and we were creating 300,000 jobs a month. We take half of that right now. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll take a third of it. Yeah, right. It's amazing. Well, and the great political calculus here is that the American people won't buy this line from Obama, which I'm sure he'll bring out at 11 and say, we'll hear it again. the corporate jets and they need to pay their share and blah, blah, blah. But my gut feeling is that people need a down payment on any sort of adjustments made in the future. They're not going to believe you're going to cut anything if you bring tax hikes to the table. I completely agree with that. In fact, I did this uh, uh, article with uh, Richard Vetter, an economist at Ohio University, a few months ago. We found that actually tax increases, every time Congress has raised taxes, spending doesn't go down, it goes up. Because right. Congress 
views that tax increase as revenues to spend more. So I think it's really critical Republicans keep taxes off the table. And you know what? They've got the moral high ground here, and they've got the political high ground. If you look at independent voters, Mary Catherine, mm-hmm. they are side, siding with Republicans right now. They're saying, look, it's a spending problem. Get the spending down first before you even start talking about raising taxes. All right, what about this 14th Amendment argument? I think you wrote about this, right? Where yep. it says, essentially says the, the public debt to the U.S. authorized by law shall, shall not be questioned. Some are saying that means that the president, I guess, has the authority to raise the debt ceiling if he wants without having to go through Congress. No, it doesn't nope. mean that. You're right. Some people are saying that. But my interpretation, I've talked to a lot of legal scholars about this. What the 14th Amendment is saying is that the federal government can't, cannot repudiate its debt. That is, it can't default. That's an argument for the Republicans. Okay. Tim, Ge- Tim Geithner's running around the country saying, oh, we're going to default if we don't raise the debt ceiling. No. What that's saying is the first obligation of the government, if we haven't raised the debt ceiling and we can only spend the tax revenues that come in, the first obligation is to pay off the, of the bonds because we can't. We are constitutionally prohibited from repudiating or defaulting on those loans. And, and I want to make clear to your listeners, because this is a really important point, all this talk about the government defaulting on its debt, the pro- the the possibility of that happening is zero. That's simply a, uh, a talking point by the Democrats to try to get the Republicans to raise taxes. Well, why is it zero? Zero. Well, it's not going to happen. There is not going to be a default on government securities under any scenario. Okay, so when we hear stories that, hey, perhaps Social Security checks won't go out on time. Well, or... you know, now, look, that could happen. Okay. You know, you could, I mean, that would be, I don't think that would happen anytime soon. But at some point, you know, if this impasse went on for months, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, you know, Social Security checks might not be sent out. But that's different from defaulting on the debt. Because, look, you don't, no one has a legal uh, a right to get a Social Security check. But you know what? If you own one of those government bonds, yes, you have a legal gotcha. right to be paid by the government. Gotcha. So what do you think will happen on August yeah. 3rd What's the bottom if, line if the debt ceiling isn't raised? I mean, is there a is there a nightmare scenario that is still out there? Uh, look, here's what I think is going to happen. I, I think they're so far apart that we may have a situation where we have a temporary shutdown in the government. And by the way, I think the, when they say that they can only go to August 2nd, I've talked to a lot of people at Treasury Department. They say they think that the Treasury could go on for another month or so beyond that before they would technically not be able to borrow. But at some point, you do reach a cliff. And I think we will have a, a, a temporary government shutdown because the sides are too far apart. Uh, and, but I don't. that's not the end of the world. Look, if right. the Department of Energy closes down by, yeah. Is that the end of the world? No, 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 it's not. No, Department of Education, I, I think yeah. we'd be all right. We could live without it. I think it, I, it, it's a little different. I think it's a lot different than what happened in 2008 in September with the TARP vote. I mean, I, I know you were against TARP and you thought, hey, you know, things would, would bounce back. But there, there seemed to be real concern in the economy and with investors and with everybody that, hey, if these banks fail, we're in a whole lot of trouble out there. In this particular case, though, hey, if the debt ceiling isn't raised, it doesn't seem like there's that much... There, there's as much panic today as there was in September of 08. Yeah, but look, it's very serious business if we don't pass the debt ceiling. I mean, Tim Geithner's right. It's a serious thing. But you know what? If there's a more serious thing, and that is if we don't get the debt under control. Yeah. We, look, it's very simple. We can't continue to be a global economic superpower if we're borrowing a trillion and a half dollars a year. It just doesn't work anymore. And this is the last point. Look, I feel like I, I'm going to wave the white flag of surrender and say, okay, it's over. If the Republicans cave on this, I'm leaving town, Mary Catherine. That's kind of how I feel. Like this is if if you don't do it now, you're not gonna do it. Yep. Uh, yep. Steve Moore is my new hero. Yeah. All right, Steve. <laughs> it's always great to have you on the program. We appreciate okay. it very much. See you guys. Steve Moore, senior uh, economics writer, Wall Street Journal, here on the